Hey everybody, as you can see the beard's growing back. It's uh, I think it's looking pretty good. Um, this week we are reading Notes from the Underground by Dostoevsky, one of my favorite books. I read it first when I was a teenager and loved it then. I can't guarantee that you'll love it as much as I did. I was kind of a weird... It's a short book compared to a lot of the things that we've read recently, but it's difficult in a lot of ways because the first half of it is kind of a long philosophical rant. The main character is never named, so critics have taken to just calling him the Underground Man, or UM. He is a bit of a grouch, kind of a card. What you might call a bit of a pill. He's the sort of person who would probably post things on Facebook just to make other people angry and uncomfortable and then sit back and kind of watch the chaos unfold around the reactions to it. He's an example of a philosophical idea known as nihilism. The rejection of religious and moral principles, uh, often in the belief that life is meaningless. And this is often also called the first existential novel. Existentialism is a term that wasn't really coined until sometime later in the 20th century. Critics looking back on this novel with that idea in mind have considered it to be the first novel to express some of the ideas of existentialism. We'll get into some of those ideas in a little bit more detail later on this semester after the midterm when we start talking about Camus and Sartre. The other idea to keep in mind about The Underground Man is paralysis. The Underground Man says that he's smarter than everybody else around him. And because of his intellect, he can't do anything. He says that the man of intellect can't possibly do anything. He can't even make himself an insect. That's interesting partly because the next book that we're going to read, The Metamorphosis, is about a guy who actually wakes up one day and he is an insect. He realizes when he thinks deeply about the consequences of his actions that there's no point to anything that he can do. So therefore, he's reduced to not being able to do anything. So here's a timeline to help establish a little bit of the context in which this book was written. In 1842, you have the Communist Manifesto. And this is important because it demonstrates some of the ideas that intellectuals were having about being critical of the Industrial Revolution and what it was going to eventually lead to. And it would take about 75 years before communism reaches its pinnacle and there's the revolution in Russia. That hasn't happened yet when Dostoevsky is writing, but the ideas are brewing, particularly among intellectuals in the big cities like St. Petersburg. Then in 1851, you have the Great Exhibition in London and its centerpiece, the Crystal Palace, it represents all the great achievements of the Industrial Revolution. 1853 to 1856 is the Crimean War, uh, where Russia is fighting against a coalition of other countries for control of the Crimean Peninsula, and that has a political effect that surges throughout Russia. 1859, Darwin publishes The Origin of Species. So now, in addition to Marxism, you have Darwinism that comes along questioning some of the status quo of what people have always believed about the way things work. 1862, the novel Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev. And if you happen to speak Russian, you'll just have to excuse my butchering of the Russian language. I'm, my Russian pronunciation is pretty bad, I'm sure. The Fathers and Sons is about this growing divide between the older generation of Russians and the younger generation of nihilists who are in conflict with that older generation. 1863, in response to Fathers and Sons, a writer named Nikolai Chernyshevsky, Chernyshevsky writes the novel, What is to be Done? And this is kind of a utopian novel. It uses that idea of the Crystal Palace as a metaphor for this utopia a utopia based on the idea of rational egoism, which basically means that what's best for society is for each individual to pursue what is best for themselves. Dostoevsky, in 
Notes from the Underground, is directly criticizing that Crystal Palace idea and the utopian concept of rational egoism. So this is something that he, that Dostoevsky has an issue with, and also the underground man will argue against it as well. That's all I got for you today. See you next time.